Our meeting tonight is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Patricia from Canada, go ahead, please. When I learned that I was going to have a baby, my husband, who was not a Christian scientist, and I visited a Christian science practitioner monthly to better understand God's spiritual creation. We planned a home birth with a midwife. To make my husband and his family at ease, we arranged for a medical doctor to be present. In the birth plan, the midwives would take the lead and catch the baby, as they call it, since they don't consider they are delivering the baby, but rather they witness a non-rushed or non-forced arrival. And the doctor liked the plan as he knew that the midwives had more experience than he had. During the midwife's prenatal classes, I told her about God's love for his children, young and old, and shared many healings with her. One day, she drew me aside and told me that her father had gathered her family together and told them that he would die soon. He'd become lethargic and lifeless. He, she asked me to pray about it, so I did. And I don't remember just how I prayed, but in a few days, he told them all to get out and quit fussing. He said that he was just too busy with plans for his garden and other projects to have them around. And she was glad to see him vivacious and back to his old grouchy self because he was at least lively, and she thanked God. When I suddenly went into labor, my husband was in a foul mood. But I just kept thinking, this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, from Psalms. The midwives reported that the baby was not in the right position, and that there would be at least 24 hours more labor. And if the baby didn't arrive by then, they would, there would likely be an infection to cause him damage or death. And if things didn't correct before then, they would transport me to the hospital for a cesarean section delivery. I asked my husband to call the Christian science practitioner, and he came back with an astonished, joyful look on his face. What'd she say, I asked. She said, I think the child will come very soon. She gave me three hymns to read to you. We did not get all the way through those hymns when I called out, Baby's coming! And the midwives ran down the stairs just in time to catch the baby. They monitored the child closely and said that he had a heartbeat so low that he was in danger of passing on and recommended that, because he was so fragile, he should not be moved. And the doctor agreed. I thought, huh, these things do not move me. I am moved by the breath of praise. And I stayed up all night long, thanking God for his gift to me, for being the great physician and omnipresent, eternal life itself. I was so certain that God does not give and then take away his gift. My son's heart rate became normal within hours. My husband was very grateful to the Christian science practitioner and to God. And today, my son is a strong young man. My thanks to divine love for his gift of Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy's example, for Christian science practitioners, and for this beloved Plainfield Church. Thank you. Thank you. Luann from New York. Go ahead, please. Thank you. A week and a half ago, my friend began displaying symptoms of what doctors have labeled a stroke. It came on out of nowhere as we were getting ready to leave the house to do some shopping. I could see a tremendous amount of fear in her eyes that was only growing deeper as she was trying to make sense of what was happening. I knew I needed to take her to the hospital in order to quiet her fear. 
From the moment the symptoms occur, I began calmly working with what I have learned about man's perfection as a child of God, knowing that man is created in the image of God, along with the understanding that God is all. It's a very calming fact. Thanks to the teachings of this church and the work of my practitioner, I was able to stand strong in this truth and trust God and just be that calm, reassuring presence that she needed. On the way to the hospital, she began to relax and regained the ability to speak. When we reached the hospital, they reform- performed the regular routine tests and questionings, and the symptoms shortly reoccurred. At one point, the doctor told her that she would never have full use of her arm or walk again. I was so outraged, I immediately corrected him by saying, you can't say that, that is not the truth. I turned to my friend and told her not to listen to him, that it was not the truth about her at all. She said, I know, God is with me, and I will be completely healed. After that, she was given some medication and was transported by ambulance to a large hospital two and a half hours away. I followed an hour later, completely at ease, and called my practitioner to tell her what was happening. He began working right away and encouraged me in the truth of being and the fact that if it didn't happen in divine mind, it didn't happen at all. Along the way, I was met with a heavy snowstorm, but through the grace of God, carried on through it safely and calmly. When I arrived at the second hospital, I found her sitting up in bed. The next day, much to the doctor's surprise, after a lot of talk about a long road to recovery, and the report of what they had found on the imaging. She was taking walks down the hallway unaided and using her arm as before. In two days, we returned home. She began resuming her normal activities. The entire claim was completely healed. I am so grateful to God and the work of my practitioner for bringing about this quick and permanent healing. It was an opportunity for both me and my friend to strengthen our trust in God and the healing power of Christ's truth. And we are constantly being bombarded with material medica and what is going on in the world today. My friend had not been very receptive to Christian science, but has expressed in the past how grateful she is for the wonderful changes that have occurred in me since I began studying Christian science through this church and getting regular support from my practitioner. I was thinking right after this occurred how sometimes we are given an opportunity to witness to our friends and family who may not always trust in what we are expressing about our love for God or our faith in Him through all things. When they saw how completely healed she was from this claim, I believe it opened their eyes to the possibility that there is more to this practice than they were previously willing to understand. I'm so grateful to this church and my practitioner for all the work she has done and for all I have been given. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jeremy. I am very grateful for this church and Christian science and all that is being freely given here. And thank you for tonight's readings as well. My gratitude tonight is for how the science taught here has been showing me how to listen to my spiritual sense and trust that the inspiration from God will guide me in all I do. In the years that I've been here, that still small voice has become easier to hear because I'm both actively listening for it and also actively working to shut down the noise of the world, which would try to obscure it. Only Christian science as taught here would have given me this ability, because I was quite prone to worrying before. The things I've been able to do because of Christian science and working with a practitioner have truly been far more than I ever thought myself capable. I was remembering the other day that when I first started getting the idea for some of the programs which Linda and I now use each week, I actually couldn't tell if it was just wishful thinking on my part. I didn't even know enough to know if it was really possible. But that prompting kept coming back, so I kept working at it. 
and I thank God I was able to be obedient. I now have learned not to shy away from a challenge that may seem humanly difficult or impossible, but rather to trust God and meekly move forward to as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, quote, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, end quote. I've been able to prove many things in my time here, and the good that has come from it I sincerely thank God for. I'm so thankful we are given the opportunity to prove to ourselves that Christian science truly works. And I'm grateful also to know that the pure Christian science taught here will provide any and all with the same ability to prove God's goodness for themselves as well. What a blessing it is to be a member of this church. Thank you. Susan from Massachusetts, go ahead, please. Thank you so much for the readings and music this evening. I am so grateful to have begun to learn since coming to this church how practical Christian science is and what an all-loving God we have. Over the last year, through turning to God, I have had healings of backache, migraine headaches, and employment difficulties that were resolved in surprising ways. And I have found that when I don't know what to do in any situation, I can completely trust that God does know. The answer always comes in God's time. Thank you for all this church is doing. And thanks to God for Christian science. Good night. Thank you. Shardy. Good evening. I would like to offer <coughs> gratitude for the wonderful things I am learning here at the Plainfield Independent Church and for my practitioners' prayers and support. In realizing that doing things the old way didn't work and changing my ways has been a most amazing life renewal. Learning to slow down and to wait on God for guidance and inspiration brings peace and happiness. Even the way I pray in the morning is different. I think it was Mrs. Eddy who suggested saying the 23rd Psalm the Lord's Prayer, and the 91st Psalm in the morning. Praying without ceasing, then, is more natural, and I can go on my way, checking in to feel if I'm on the right track. <coughs> I find that I am able to do more work in a shorter amount of time, and that my accuracy is improving. I am blessed, grateful, and humbled. Each day brings bright new promise, and as it says in the Bible, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Isaiah 26. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy from New Jersey. Go ahead, please. Good evening. I wanted to express my gratitude for the service this evening and for the wonderful readings and music. It was read tonight from Miscellaneous Writings on page 354, A Little More Grace, A Motive Made Pure, A Few Truths Tenderly Told, A Heart Softened, A Character Subdued, A Life Consecrated, would restore the right action of the mental mechanism and make manifest the movement of body and soul in accord with God. I've always loved this beautiful statement, and whenever I hear it or read it, I am immediately reminded of a very quick healing that I had several years ago when I first came to the Plainfield Church. I had tripped and taken a very hard fall, hurting both my knee and my hand and wrist. I couldn't seem to get up or put any weight on my hand and noticed that it was already quite bruised. A fellow church member who was in another room heard the loud noise and before even seeing me began loudly declaring, 
God good. As she approached and saw me struggling to get up, she began to speak to me so tenderly the truth that in divine mind I could never fall from God, that it couldn't happen. As she helped me up, she just kept gently speaking the truth to me, and I could feel the divine love washing over me. The pain started to leave me very quickly, and I was able to move freely, and not too long after that, the bruising began to fade away. I am so grateful for this wonderful demonstration of Mrs. Eddy's statement that the truth, tenderly told, will make manifest the movement of body and soul in accord with God. I am so grateful to my fellow church member who was so instant in the truth that it did indeed restore the right action of my thinking, resulting in this quick healing. I'm so grateful to God for Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and the support of my practitioner. And I'm very grateful for Christian science and how it is taught and practiced in this Plainfield Church. I'm very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the music and very much for the readings tonight. I want to express my gratitude for the Plainfield Independent Christian Science Church, its members, and clear and correct teaching of Christian science. Recently, I was reading addresses by Martha Wilcox, who lived with Mrs. Eddy, and her book can be found on our website. In the chapter, Our Mission in the World, is individual, there's a paragraph titled Benevolence. Here she writes about falling into the incorrect attitude of, quote, substituting personal benevolence for scientific demonstration, end quote. And she goes on talking about becoming a personal giver and receiver. And she adds that often this leads to self-depletion and lacks wisdom. I have found this in myself when I drop to the level of human giving. I find I then become depleted of time for God, self-growth, energy, peace, resources, etc. And this is what we're being taught here in practical ways to watch that we don't fall into human will and do-goody behavior. Mrs. Wilcox writes, quote, Man receives all that God gives, and through reflection gives all that he receives. We are being most benevolent when we refuse to accept the personal sense testimony of limitation and poverty, and understand that man consciously exists at the standpoint of infinite supply or infinity." End quote. I'm so grateful for the ongoing lessons and how to demonstrate spiritual love at this church. To be learning how to know God better and walk with him so as to keep him in the middle of all we do. I am grateful for practitioner support here that brings to light that which impedes our progress, spirit word. As I have been uh, working on letting go of this personal giving of what I thought should be done or had to be done, and start working on keeping in tune with God and His messages, inspiration, and turning my day over, I have found that I have strength and time and ideas needed to do all that God intended that I do that day, unlike in the past where I would get a burdened sense. I have found no other place or teachings that show forth the results that are found here that prove its source being in God himself. I'm very grateful for our good God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and this church. Thank you. I believe it's hymn number um, 148. Part of it says, The storm may roar without me. And I remember Mrs. Evans teaching that one time in a class, 
probably several times in the class, but um, that had always, the storm may roar without me. But she said, no, the storm may roar without me. And it just made such an impression on me. And I have used that so many times. If there's any turmoil going on at my office or in the world, any turmoil at all, without me. Because if I get suckered into it, I'm not going to be good for anything to anybody. Um, that if, if we keep ourselves out of the, the turmoil, the problem, and, and just see it for what it is, it's just animal magnetism trying to pull us down and pull whoever it is down. Um, it, that's been such a help to me, and uh, I find that I can hear what God is um, asking me to work with and work on so much better if I keep myself out of the turmoil. That was, that was such a wonderful teaching, and I've, I've never forgotten that. I am extremely grateful for it. Thank you. Sharon. Recently, I got the thought that every afternoon I should take a few minutes and just be peaceful and sometimes have a cup of tea and just make my connection with God stronger. And I've been doing that recently. And sometimes if there's a problem, I work on it. Or sometimes I just listen for God to speak to me look out the window and be grateful for the grass and the blue sky. But it's helped me so much to calm down, make sure I'm on the right path, and to be clear with what I'm supposed to be doing. I am so grateful for the teaching that I've received in this church, for practitioner help, and for all the good that I've received. And thank you for the beautiful readings. They were wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. Well, tonight I'd like to talk about tithing. And the reason I'd like to talk about it is because I have found that when someone tithes regularly and willingly with a ready heart, it is a sign of great spiritual growth, which is the point of everything we should be doing. Tithing is giving each week 10% of one's income to his church. For most of us, that amount of tithing can seem like a lot of money. It therefore represents a great leap of faith. Real tithing shows a deep faith, a deep trust in God to provide all our needs, and great gratitude for him for doing so. Christian science teaches us that God is the source of all good, including our income, and that there is no limit to his goodness. We also find that in giving, we fit ourselves to receive more of God's goodness. And what better way to give than to financially support the institution that is showing the world who and what God is? We all give in different ways, and we all give of what we have. And this kind of giving can never impoverish us. It can only bless us, although we don't really do it for that reason. Well, it's one of the practical ways in which we can thank God for all the good that he has given us and support the mission of this church to help free mankind from all the beliefs of limitation and lack. This kind of gratitude is a tremendous safe, tremendously safe consciousness a tremendously safe state of consciousness. And it's that state of gratitude that is essential for spiritual growth. And to tithe each week willingly and cheerfully shows great progress in that growth. And I'd just like to say I'm very grateful to, this, to the many members of this church 
who are tithing regularly because it really does show great spiritual growth. And that makes me very happy. And I'm sure it makes God very happy as well. It's great to be with you all tonight. Thank you. Lil. Thank you for those wonderful readings and the wonderful music. <clears throat> I'm so grateful to God for leading me to this independent Christian Science Church. It was all God's doing. I wasn't looking for a church, but this was a perfect unfolding. Every part of my life has been totally blessed. Every need has been met, physically, mentally, financially, and having a loving church family. Thank you, God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and my practitioner for strong total support for every need. This is a perfect way of life. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Mary. Good evening, everyone. I have plenty to read tonight. I'm not sure I'll get through it all, but start off with Canada. I'm very grateful to have access to the archive Bible studies and the roundtables made available on the website. The Bible studies include some sessions back in 2018 on the book of Revelation, and I find them very helpful in understanding the message in Revelation and to tie them in with the corresponding chapter in our textbook, Science and Health, The Apocalypse. I no longer skip over reading the book of Revelation in the Bible, as I have done many times in the past, and now to have a current Bible study sessions on Revelation is truly an immeasurable gift. I am very grateful to be part of this fellowship and for all that I am learning here at the Plainfield Christian Science Church. May we all continue to grow in truth and in our love for God. And then England. Thank you for the wonderful daily statements that arrive faithfully in my email inbox every morning. They are such a joy and an uplift, and often they are so fitting, it is extraordinary. Today the electrician is working in our house. I was just sitting at my desk working when my, when my partner told me the power would be switched off intermittently. No problem, I said. I'll do something else when that happens. I then opened the daily statement to read, quote, God never changes his power. It is forever the same, end quote, by Albert Cheney. Just wow. I mean, just wow. <laughs> A friend told me recently that there is no such thing as coincidences. There are only God instances. And I think I can safely say this was one of them. Thank you so much for all the work that goes into sending out such so much good into the world from the Plainfield Independent Christian Science Church. The daily statements are just one small part of this, but they are so very helpful and powerful. Much love to you all. And then this is from North Carolina. We are awestruck by the death and devotion of all the contributions to the Revelation Bible study today. So grateful to Thomas for presenting the questions which spur this discussion. We miss the last one, but feel a little like the two disciples who recognized that burning in their hearts when they encountered Jesus on the walk to Emmaus. Thank you. Thank you to all. Learning so much. And then this is an email from Sweden. At the turn of the last century, Christian science was an interest among certain aristocrats in our country, Scania. There are many castles here, and their owners were among the few who were able to read English at that time. It would be easier to pick up Christian science today. In 2011, there was a beautiful exhibition of European and American Impressionists in Edinburgh, Scotland. My partner decided to see the art and flew over to Scotland, and it was worth it. She went to the exhibition daily. On a Sunday morning, she went for a walk, 
the weather being glorious. Up a small hill there was an ancient monument with an interesting text on a plaque. She commenced reading it, but halfway through there was an urge to go, to go on, so she immediately went in the direction shown that she would find it. It was going to be what she and her friend had been searching for over the years. She walked down the hill and was led to a part of the capital unknown to her. There was a street lined with neoclassical buildings. She had to stop when reaching the smallest of them. This was it. In awe she looked up, eager to see what it was, and she read Christian Science Reading Room. Back in Sweden, she told her friend, who later found the Plainfield Independent Church. And then you asked about that old church in our village, and this is what it looks like. The person that's writing this um, is a photographer. He has a beautiful website. Anyway, you ask what it looks like. The photo below was taken and an old camera, 120 years old and still functional. Yes, there is something to the walls of a building where praying has been continued for a thousand years. We are adding a photo from a nearby lake Swedish John. <laughs> I don't speak Swedish or Hawaiian very well. I, I guess that's that, that where you live, nature must be Nordic in character too. We may seem far away, but there was a wave of emigration from this village to your part of the world. It was in the late 19th century when half its population took this decision. There used to be reunion visits. And he goes on to say how his friend is going to be joining our church and that they're so grateful. She says, thank you for the sterling work. And he gave us permission. We will uh, put some of these beautiful pictures on our website, on our magazine, maybe in the newsletter, and on our bulletin board. <laughs> so that was from Sweden. Okay, Virginia. Dear fellow members, my heart is filled with gratitude today as I review the blessings received from being associated with this independent church, its dedicated members, and its ongoing mission. Here I have found the truth, divine love, which loves with no object but to glorify God, a place to grow in understanding, with correction, not condemnation, and the opportunity to know and share joy. With unending gratitude to God, to Christ Jesus, our way shower, to our forever leader, Mary Baker Eddy, and to this church, church's rock-solid stand for truth and its demonstration, I enclose my monthly contribution. And then this is a testimony from England. Just before Christmas, I lost my little camera. I believe I accidentally left it in the bank when I visited. A little later the same day, I discovered that it was no longer in my handbag. It was too late to go back to the bank before it closed, but I affirmed that nothing was lost in God's kingdom, and when, she, and when mentioned the situation to my Plainfield practitioner, she also kindly reminded me that what God gives cannot be lost. I went back to the bank first thing in the morning, morning fully, fully expecting the camera to have been handed in to one of the cashiers, but no, they didn't fi find it. I did try posting a message on a local Facebook group in case anyone had found it, but there was no response. I've had lovely experiences with so-called lost items in the past, and have heard lovely testimonies from the Plainfield members of being re reunited with misplaced items. So whenever it came to mind, I affirmed that God knew where it was and also that God's man is not dishonest. Then, in talking to a friend recently, I told her of my missing camera. She was interested and then related an experience of hers. She said she had found a bundle of banknotes on the pavement near her home. This is very unusual at the moment, as shops have been discouraging the use of money or favor of credit and debit cards, so people are not tending to carry money. She looked around, but there was no one who might have dropped this, so she took it to the lo local police station, where the rule is they will hold such an item for 28 days, and if no one has claimed it by that time, 
than the belong than it belongs to the finder. So after twenty eight days she collected it. There was a small bank slip with the money, and so she she also contacted contacted the bank, but there wasn't enough information to identify a particular customer, and no one had reported a loss to them. So my friend was very pleased to give me half of the money and was going to give the other half to a charity she supports. I was extremely grateful and sincerely thanked her and God for this sum, which was a significant proportion of the cost of a new camera, which I have now purchased. This experience showed me not only that God is in control and we are provided for, but that, that I should not outline the solution to a situation, as God has many ways to demonstrate provision for us. I have also been affirming that the person who lost the bundle of notes will also be cared for by God's supply. I am very grateful for Christian science, for Christ Jesus' example, and Mrs. Eddy's gift to the world of this way of thinking and living for the kind help of my practitioner, and for all that I am learning at Plainfield. I thank you all with love. And I would just like to say about her, she takes these beautiful pictures of England that she sends to us and was right that she be provided with a camera because they have certainly, they have graced our church, our magazine, our... Um, newsletter, and we're very grateful for them. So we thank you all for all the contributions you give to our church. They're all very much appreciated. And I, too, am very grateful for those readings tonight. What a wonderful thought about God being the only and the great physician. I love to think of that. And also the beautiful statement from miscellaneous writings that God's preparations for the sick are potions of his own qualities. I mean, what, a, what a beautiful thought. And uh, Nancy's beautiful testimony as well, where she's quoting Mrs. Eddy, a little more grace, a few truths tenderly told. These are potions of God's qualities. And how important it is that we express these qualities if we would be healthy and happy and free. Today I was studying the article by Bicknell Young, entitled Eyes and Ears in his book, Collected Writings. And he says, Do not look for the demonstration, but seek God with your whole heart. That sounds like a simple statement, but how often, you know, when we're desiring something, whether it's money or physical healing or whatever, a relationship problem healed, we, we look for that demonstration. We look for that to be solved. But here he's saying, no, take your focus off that and seek God with your whole heart. Perhaps applying those potions of his, of his character and his grace. Think on those things. And as we focus on those things, and as we grow in grace and character, the healings do come whatever they are, whatever is needed. Because as, as Christ Jesus has said, um, first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I just love those thoughts. It puts everything in the right perspective. Um, I learn so much every time I come to these meetings. and so grateful for the beautiful music, the readings, the testimonies, and to be with you all tonight. Thank you.